Again, my name is John D. Berry, and I am a serial entrepreneur. And when I say a serial entrepreneur, that's all I've ever done was own my own companies. I, um, oops, I graduated from college in 1982, and literally since 1982 have worked in my own business uh, from 82 to I'm um, 59 now, uh, majority of those years, I think I was maybe working for somebody else maybe four years out of those 30 something years. So, and I, in that time, I've had a lot of different businesses. But what I want to talk to you all about today is it's about business, but it's really about life. I like to talk to you about life because if you don't get life right, your business ain't gonna be right. You might make a lot of money in the business, but you're not gonna enjoy life. So I like to talk to you about life, which in fact is gonna help your business. It's gonna help you enjoy your life. First of all, let me tell you this. You all should be excited about being on this earth at this time. I mean, I look around and I'm so excited as I travel and as I was driving here this morning. You know, out of the 10,000 years or million years, whichever people you listen to, that the earth has been in existence, God chose you at this time to be here to make your difference in the earth. At this specific time, uh, May the 2nd, 2019, God decided that he wanted you to be here to make a difference in the earth. And the thing why I'm, I'm so excited about that because I look at the way this world was created. He say God saw it. He imagined it. He thought it. Then he created it by saying it. And guess what? The way he designed this world is the way our lives are designed. You can do the same thing in your own life by using the same formula that God used. Imagine what you want out of life. Think it. Say it. And then go to work. And create what you were put on this earth to do. Create that destiny, that desire. And I've been listening to this guy the other day. He says, your wish fulfilled. Go ahead and start seeing your wish fulfilled, your desire fulfilled. Go ahead and start at age 90 when you get ready to die and look back over your life and see where, where I want to be at age 90. And work towards it. Look at age 90 when you get ready to leave this earth or uh, age 120, whichever you decide and say, this is what I want to have accomplished. I want to be worth 100 million, if that's your desire. I want to have four kids and 20 grandkids, if that's your desire. I want to be married to a man, like I was just reading the other day, this couple was, a, the my husband was 103 and the wife was 101. They've been married, I think it was, it was 77 years. Yeah, and they're still together. And all of them still had their faculties. They were still moving around. So I'm telling you, this is an exciting time to be on this earth. Things are moving way faster than it ever had. It's moving fast. There's opportunities available everywhere in the world. Let's get this out of the way right now. I don't care how you were born. I don't care if your mom and daddy gave you away. I don't care if they were crackheads. I don't care what. If you're in this room, you're in the top 10% of people in the world. I don't care what happened. I don't care whether you black, Hispanic, white. Don't matter. If you're in this room, you're in the top 10% and it ain't nothing in this world. Nothing. I know that's not a word. It ain't nothing in this world that you can't accomplish. It's totally up to you. 
if it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. You need to start looking yourself in the mirror and saying that to yourself every day. It's totally up to you. I don't care what happens. And if you're around here racist or mad with people because they're a different color from you, you're saying God was stupid and God didn't know what he was doing. So that's literally what you're saying. All of us are one. And all of us come out of one mind, the mind of God. So you remember that. So when you start talking about racism and all this foolishness, <laughs> you're talking about, you know, God made a mistake. And can't nobody hold you back from being successful but you. It ain't no race getting this and no race getting that. The world will fool you and make you think that. And you will concentrate all your time on that and you will be a failure. Instead of just believing that the creator who designed you and made you, made you perfect in your own way. And that there's a dream and vision that's in you that's been in you since you were born. And with that dream and vision, you can accomplish what's in your heart. What's in your heart, you can accomplish. You can do whatever you want to do on this earth. I don't care what it is. You can accomplish your dreams and your aspirations. I'm here today talking to you about this. <clears throat> My wife just had a heart transplant. Spent 95 days in the hospital. Mm. Normally it's a three week <coughs> operation. There were some mistakes made, you know, spending 95 days in the hospital. And people ask me, I'm out there all the time at the hospital, staying with her, stayed at the hospital like 11 or 12 days because they had her in a coma and they wouldn't let her wake up, you know, because they wanted to keep her in this coma. So, you know, to they didn't figure out what was going on. And people were looking at me saying, wow, you, you don't seem to be stressed or nothing like that. You don't seem to be bothered by this. I mean, you know, most people be, you know, you can see the tenseness. But my wish fulfilled. I had already seen the end. I had already seen my wife back home. And I'm going to be honest with you, y'all over 18. I had already seen my wife back home, me and her making love in our bed. And that was, that's what I focus on, my wish fulfilled. I didn't focus on where she was right then and laying there and a lot of people, you know, thinking about she might could die and stuff like that. Never thought about that. I focus on what I want, my wish fulfilled. I focus on that. And that's what I'm telling you. You got dreams and aspirations within you. Start seeing that at the end. Start seeing it already done. A couple of weeks ago, I just finished a deal that worked out, paid me quite a bit of money. This thing had been going on about eight or nine years. What I had to do is I had to go to another level in my mental, my subconscious, to start seeing these guys writing me a check. And once I went to that new level with this new teaching that I've been doing uh, 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 and learning, boom, within like <coughs> 60 days, I get it. I've been waiting on this thing for like eight, nine years. And once I start doing this and really focusing on this new thing, my wish fulfilled and start imagining seeing myself, which is the way God created her. He saw man first. Then he went out and made man. But he had to see him in his mind's eye first. I'm telling you all, we have the same, the same way he designed this earth. He has created you, and he has made you that same kind of creator. That you can create your own life. Whatever your desire is, whatever your wish is, he has created you that same way. So you can start having what you want in life. Okay? So I just wanted to share that with y'all. Now, and, and we're going to get back on that, but some other things I want to talk about that as you go through life, that's real important. 
These are the most important things I'm gonna tell you that I found. I'm 59 years of age, and I know, I know, y'all can't believe it. I look like I'm about 37, 38. I agree with you. I agree with you. But I am 59. My father died at age 47. He had a sister at 44, a sister at 45, a brother at 32, a brother at 52, and in 1999, my oldest brother died at 48. All these people died of heart attacks. So that's kind of like why I started this company. I started doing research why my family died. I had a nephew that age 26 had a heart attack, but he lived. But we found out that the blood in our family easily clots. So that's what was calling all my family members to die. So what I did is when I found this out, I started doing research. I went to New Orleans, I went to Florida, I went to Atlanta, I went to Maryland, Baltimore, D.C., North Carolina, attending all kinds of conferences dealing with herbs, dealing with natural herbs, learning about things that we could take internally that would keep our body from clotting, keep our blood from clotting. So as I did this research, I came up with this formula, and I've got some pills we call Manor 2 that, I, that uh, you can take that you yourself, but it purifies our blood and it keeps our blood from clotting. That's how we got started in the company. I was 39 at the time when my 48-year-old brother died. I didn't want to get in my 40s and die. So I started doing this research on these herbs, and I came up with this supplement. Now, again, I told you earlier, I'm 59. Most of the time, most of the, most black men and women, by the time they're in their late 40s, they got high blood pressure, and a lot of them got diabetes too, you know. And, and in my family, definitely that was the case. I'm 59 years old, I don't have either one of them. And that's the point I'm making. I start taking care of my health. The health is the most important thing that God <laughs> gave you on this earth. I'm going to tell you, I don't care what you want to do in life. If your health is bad, if you're in pain, you can forget it. You might succeed, but you won't enjoy it. You might succeed, but you won't enjoy it. And most of the time, our health is self-inflicted, not taking care of ourselves. And that's what I want to share with you. If you don't do nothing else, listen to me. Take care of your health. Take care of your health. Start eating right now. You young people, start eating right now. Start exercising. Take care. You don't want to have diabetes and high blood pressure and all these other things, cancer, and all this stuff that go along with it. Take care of your health. I was in a conference not too long ago. This lady had, uh, she was a hospice specialist. And she actually came in when people were dying. And she counseled them and helped them go through transition. She said she worked with over a thousand people that had cancer. And she said about everybody that she worked with that had cancer had a lot of unforgiveness in them. They were holding stuff against other people, or their parents, or loved ones, and things like that. Now, I'm not saying everybody that has cancer, that's their issue. But she said that's what she found. And actually, she was able to get some of those people caught them in time where they were able to forgive, and they actually came out of hospice and continued to live. But someone was able to forgive and then transition peacefully. And I'm saying that because I brought that up earlier. No matter what kind of family you grew up with, your mama, your dad, or whatever, your brothers or sisters, I don't care how nobody treated you or mistreated you, now you grow <coughs> and you help it. You can make decisions on your own, forgive them, let it go. You ain't got to fool with them. I'm not saying you got to be all in their face, love it, dove it. But you got to let it go, and you cannot sit around and say, because of them, I ain't this. Because of them, I ain't that. God gave you everything you need the day you were born. 
He gave you everything you need the day you were born to be successful on this earth. All you got to do is find out what you want to do and manifest it within yourself. And once you start seeing it within yourself, it will come openly. You will start seeing it throughout the world. People will start seeing your success. But it's totally up to you. If it's going to be, if it's going to be, who's up to? Me. Me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. Come on now, Nick. I'm going to do that again now. Y'all be ready. All right? It's up to you all. You have this. I'm going to tell you, this is the greatest opportunity in the history of the world right now. Because things are moving so fast. I'm going to Guatemala in about three months. You know, hopefully in Africa next next year, early next year. You know, in the Europe. Everybody's traveling, going everywhere. My son was over in, in, in France uh, a couple of months ago. And he said he met this girl that's 25, 26 years old. And her job is to travel from Asia to North Africa. I mean, the world's moving. I mean, I thought that was so exciting. 25, 26 year old girl working for a big company just moving. And I brought that up because I'm telling you all, just because you're here in Jamestown today, that don't mean you can't be in Peru tomorrow. God made this whole world, this whole thing for you. This whole thing, and I'm sharing this with you because I don't want you to limit your dream. I don't want you to limit your dream. Don't think Jamestown is where you go spend the rest of your life. Now, if this is what you want, fine. But if you want more, if you want to see this world, go see it. Go see it. Go do it. Just don't settle for just settling. This whole world was made for you. This land is my land. From sea to sea. Ain't nothing to keep you from going to Europe, Africa, Australia, South America. It's beautiful. You got to go see it. Got to go see it. You know, uh, this world was made for you. You got to have your health in line. Make sure you start taking care of your health. Start eating right. And I brought up about the cancer thing because I want to tell you, when you talk about health, the biggest thing that, you know, we we're talking about unforgiveness, which unforgiveness, holding on to forgive, unforgiveness and stuff like that, it creates stress in the body. When it creates stress in the body, it affects the body in a negative way. And I know this because I'm going to tell you, since 1999, this is all I've been studying. I go places and talk and they think I'm a doctor. People ask, how you know this? How you know that? When the adrenaline gland is not working right and the thyroid gland is not working right, most of the time it's stress. And they'll give you all these pills and stuff like that and all you got to do is learn how to manage your stress. And a lot of these things are gone. In fact, medical science now even admit that 80% of all diseases, 80% of all diseases uh, start in the mind. 80% of all diseases start in the mind. The medical, uh, uh, they'll mention it, they'll, they'll agree on that now. So I'm just telling you, get your mind right. Get your subconscious mind right. Clear all that foolishness out. Forget what happened with mama and forget what happened to daddy and all that. <coughs> because you're in this room, you're in the top 10% in the world. And it ain't nothing you can't accomplish. And I don't care right now if your credit ain't before 400. I don't care what happened. I don't care if all your are you bankrupt if you if you just got a um your car repo just got kicked out your house or if you're homeless, it still ain't got nothing to do with what you're gonna succeed in life and what you're gonna be. What you're gonna be tomorrow is still totally up to you. All you gotta do is change your mind. All you gotta do is say I'm not gonna live like this no more, and then put together a plan and start working that plan. It's just that simple. It's totally up to you. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. It's totally up to you. You can have anything you want. Now, we talked about the health issue. 
And that's important. Now, there's another part of this thing. That these are the two things that I saw that are real big on whether you succeed in life. Now, here's the other one. That y'all young people. Anybody in here married? Okay. Okay. All right. Let me tell you something. If you marry the wrong person, or if you partner with the wrong person, it is hell on earth. You ain't got the way you go to see the devil. If you marry the wrong person, it's hell on earth. Partner with the right person. I've seen, that, and this is one, I'm 59, me and my wife do marriage couple counseling. I'm telling you, I was praying about two years ago, and I was asking God, why are there so much divorce in the church like it is in the <coughs> world? Because it's about 50% in, the, in Christian, and it's about 50% in the world getting divorced. And I asked him why, and you know what he told me? And, but it wasn't like he told me that day, but it was over a period of time. He said, because I didn't tell him to get married. He said, a lot of people get married in, 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 in front of me and make that vow in front of me. But, and I, I let them do it because God would never mess with, you know, what we want to do. He would never tell us not to, you know, when you want to smoke that crack pipe, God ain't, you know, well, he, you already know you're doing wrong. But he ain't gonna come in there and knock it out your hand and keep you from doing it. You know, and then when you marry the wrong person, he ain't gonna push you off the stage and say, no, no, don't do it. He'll allow you to make your own decision. But a lot of people get married and they're saying, I do and I love the Lord and all that. But it's not his will. So I'm telling you. Make sure you know what you do before you get in love or fall in love with the wrong person. Because I'm telling you, you talking about hell on earth. You talking about hell on earth, I'm telling you. I know it can't nobody in here talk about that. Everybody in here got great marriages and stuff like that. So, But, uh, you know, keep living. Keep living. I talk to your aunts and uncles and uh, or uh, somebody in the family. And just say, be honest with me. Just say, be honest with me. I found a boo that I'm thinking about uh, we might marry one day. Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Janie, be honest with me. How is married? And let her tell you the truth. In fact, I just had a conversation the other day. Lady been married 40, I think it was 45 years. See, her children came to her and said, Mama, Daddy, it's time for y'all to renew y'all vows. That'll be good. Say, she looked at her and said, This is what I'm going to tell y'all. Say, y'all crazy as hell. <laughs> so I'm getting ready to get a divorce. This woman was in her session. Yeah, I'm getting ready to get a divorce. That was about two years ago when that conversation happened. Ran across the lady uh, a couple of weeks ago. I said, well, what did you decide? I left him. I ain't got a divorce. She said, I moved in with my daughter up here. This was down in Rayford, North Carolina, but she moved in with her daughter up in Greensboro, North, Greensboro went to St. Lamar, her granddaughter. They said, girl, I'm, I'm enjoying life. But she was married 45 years and a half. Now, a lot of people might say, wow, you live 45 years like that. Why you didn't stick it out? Look. God hates divorce, but God also don't want us in no toxic environments. God made you for a purpose. And if you're not fulfilling that purpose, I'm telling you, he don't want you in no toxic environment. You only got 80, 90, 100 years on this earth. I'm telling you, do not live on this earth unhappy. Now I'm saying, you know, don't mistreat nobody. Don't try to kill nobody. Don't curse nobody, nothing like that. Do it to others as you want them doing to you. But I'm telling you, life is too short to live. You ain't got about 70, 80, 90 years, and you're going to spend 30, 40, 50 in a uh, unhappy. 
I know a man got a divorce after 26 years, and the guy asked him, say, man, y'all were married that long. Why didn't you just make it work? You gonna, he said, man, if I could do it all over again, I would have left after the first 90 days. <laughs> after the first 90 days, I knew we didn't have that. But he stayed another 26 years. That's what I mean. And you ain't got but 70, 80, 90 years on the earth. Why would you spend 26 years with somebody being unhappy? Okay, and I'm sharing this with you all because this is real. And I want you guys to start thinking this way. All right, don't get caught up in there. So now I'm gonna go and tell y'all about the horses. Carl likes the part about the horses. And I'm sharing this with you, it's kind of like a joke, but it's real. Now there's a lot of different kind of horses, but I like to focus on four that kind of give me a identity of what I'm talking about. Okay, you got the jackass, okay? You got a mule, you got a quarter horse, and you got the thoroughbred, which is the standard, okay? You got those four kind of horses. Now the jackass is a stubborn horse. He gonna do what he wanna do. He gonna do it sometimes, and then he might not do nothing. He just want to live his life. He ain't want nobody bothering him. And, and, and don't look for a whole lot out of the jackass. Okay? Because he's a jackass. That's why his name, jackass. <laughs> he, 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 I'm serious. He's, not, he, he, he's just going to be a jackass. He'll do stuff. If he feel like working, he'll go to work. If he don't feel like working that day, he ain't going. Ain't nothing you can get him to do. Then you got the mule. The mule's a hard worker. He's a hard worker. He'll work from eight to five every day. Now he ain't gonna do no overtime or nothing like that, but he's gonna work when you got to work. <coughs> he's gonna take his lunch break, then he's gonna come home. And the mule just want to be content with that. He don't want to move up on the job. He just want to stay in that job he got and be content with that job. He wants his two weeks vacation a year, and he's satisfied. He's satisfied, give him his two weeks vacation, leave him alone, he's gonna come home, he's gonna open up some beers, and he's gonna watch TV, baseball, basketball, and his TV all day long. That's the mule. Then you got the quarter horse. The quarter horse is a person that might move up in the middle management, if you get a pure, uh, good quarter horse, they might move up into upper management. And then you might have one that might want to open his own business. But he would be content with just having that one business, that one store or whatever, that one restaurant or whatever, and they'll be content. <clears throat> and that's okay if that's what you want. And they would like to take the two, three weeks vacation a year and that type thing, and that's fine. But then you got the, the standing. The thoroughbred, who wants it all. Who wants to be the CEO of the company. Who wants to be the owner of the company. Who wants to have businesses all over the United States, all over the world. Who wants to travel the world. That's the thoroughbred. So what you got to do is decide who you are. Are you a jackass? Are you a mule? Are you a quarter horse or are you a stand? You decide which one you are. Now I'm gonna tell you what's even worse than once you decide who you are, make sure you get with somebody that's compatible. I spoke uh, this about a year and a half ago in uh, uh, this class. And one of the young ladies, I actually grew up with her mom. So after I got through talk, talking, she went home and told her husband, I found out later on, she went home and told her husband, said, you know what, I found out, I made a mistake. I actually married a jackass, and a man explained it to me today in my class. So. <laughs> what was she? Huh? What was she? 
That's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. She, she Obviously, said, she wasn't there. Right, 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 right. But uh, no, I, I actually, she actually taught like a go giver. Okay, so okay. I, 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 the young lady was a minister. Um, I could probably make you remember later on, but we won't okay. do that right now. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, um, you want to make sure that you get with somebody that's compatible. Now, if you want to get with a jackass, you got to understand. <coughs> y'all gonna have issues. Y'all gonna struggle. Both of y'all gonna be. If you're a jackass too, y'all gonna be stubborn. Both y'all gonna be going back and forth all y'all life. Now, if you get with a mule, you got a good person that'll be faithful, but they 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 just gonna work and they content and they content with going to Myrtle Beach once a year and coming back home. You start talking about going to Los Angeles, uh, you don't got them out of their comfort zone. They content with going to the same vacation every year and stuff like that. But you got to understand that. And I'm sharing this with you because these are kind of questions. You ain't got to call them a jack. Are you a mule jackass? You ain't got to do that. But you can ask them questions and figure out, what are your dreams, baby? What do you want to be in life? And everybody can tell you, I want to own this and this and this and this. But you look at where they've been. And look at what they're doing, and they can tell you where they're going. And that's not saying that everybody's going to end up just by looking at their past. But, you know, they should be working towards their goals <coughs> at some point in their life. You know, especially depending on where they are in their life. But anyway, the quarter, the, the, the thoroughbred is going to be a hard worker. But don't expect him to want to move up on the job. And don't get mad with him. When they come in and say, honey, you've been on this job, uh, sir, you've been on this job 25 years, and you will make a great supervisor. And he come home and tell his wife and stuff, then he tell her, say, but uh, I don't think I'm going to take the job. Don't get mad at him, because he's amused. And he's content with being where he's at. And you know he didn't have no whole lot of goals and ambition, but you... Married him anyway. Then you got the quarter horse. And ain't nothing wrong with the quarter horse. If that's what you want. If you want to get in middle level of management with a company, uh, uh, own your own business and just have that one store or something, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm not knocking any of these uh, places, but you just got to know who you are and know who your mate are in this so you don't get caught up. And then mad with the world, and it all came down to your decision. It was your decision. Okay? So you got the quarter horse, then you got the standing. Who wants it all? The thoroughbred. Now, don't be a mule and marry the standing. Our quarter has some married, married the standing, then get mad because he wants to go, wants to go, wants to do this, want to do that, and you don't want to do it. And all along, you saw this man wanted to do this, or this woman wanted to do this. And now you're mad because they want to go and do and accomplish things. Don't mess up nobody else's life. If you're a mule, get your mule. If you're a jackass, get your jackass. If you're a quarter horse, now a quarter horse in the stand, you can make it. As long as that quarter horse is understandable, that I'm going to support this person, you know, they can make it. And a mule and a quarter horse can probably make it. But a jackass, ain't nobody going to make it with a jackass, but a jackass. <laughs> okay? So know who you are. Know who you are. Don't mess up nobody else's life and don't let nobody else mess up <coughs> your life. Know what you want out of life. Write it down. I do this thing right now, and I'm going to tell you, this is, I'm ex so excited about this. I um, also run this organization called Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International. I'm the area director from North Carolina to New York. It's a Christian organization. And what, what we do in that is we work with men. It really boils down to men having men. Well, I got some youth that I work with. This year, I took a, uh, we took about uh, 45 young men between 10 and 20 down to the ocean. And we worked with them for a whole weekend. And what we did is, 
I set them up with mentors. And they got mentors from all over the United States now, helping these young men. And most of them were black, black young boys. So we got people helping them all over. And it's exciting. But I was able to give them this I am thing. Have anybody ever heard of that? I am now? Everybody's preaching that now. I am, you know, I am is supposed to be what God told Moses. I am that I am. Okay, that was God's name. I am. Well, you are I am. You are I am. Okay? You are what you say you are. I am great. I am successful. I am happy. I am peaceful. You are who you say you are. So you need to start speaking the I am's to yourself. Okay? And this is what I did with these young boys. I made them take their cell phone and do selfies. <clears throat> and I gave each one of them about 25 I am. Then I told them to add about 10 or 15 more. And they videoed themselves saying the I am's to themselves. And they did it three times. Now, three times a day, they watch themselves telling themselves who they are. I am great. I am the best basketball player at age 14 in the United States. That's what my grandson says every day. I am this, I am that, whatever. That's what they do. And I'm telling you, them kids have seen dramatic changes already. One kid last summer, his half-brothers, his 17-year-old half-brother killed his 16-year-old half-brother. And this kid goes to a private school that was doing well. The private school he goes to, once he finished eighth grade, if he got the grades, he can go to any private school in the United States. Even with the Kennedy kids, the Rockefeller kids, Trump kids, what well, everywhere. But because his brother got killed in summer, this kid was struggling in school and it looked like he wasn't gonna get into other school. Well, he was able to go with us. And we had him and we started him on this program. And now this kid grazes back up <coughs> just by falling this. And I'm sharing this with you. I want you all to do that. Come up with 30 to 35 I am. I am love. I am joy. I am peace. I am the righteousness of Christ. I am a God. Psalms 82, 6 say you are God. I am a God. You can put in 35, 30, 35 of those and video yourself three times and start watching and what I do, I got mine, and I got mine loose where I can actually listen all night long, even while I sleep. Because guess what's so exciting? I'm going to give y'all some knowledge that you don't even know. Your subconscious never sleep. Your subconscious never sleep. Your subconscious is what work your heart, is what work your liver, which work, work, work your lungs, your stomach. All that stuff got to stay working. But your subconscious mind is the one that keeps that working. And guess what? Even though you sleep, <clears throat> that your subconscious mind hear those I am. It hear those I am. And it's locking it into you. It's locking it into your brain. That you are who you say you are. And once you believe you are who you say you are, you're going to start manifesting what you want on this earth. Your wish fulfilled. The things you want at 90 are going to start happening. Boom, 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 boom. You're going to start seeing it falling in line. Wow. I'm accomplishing these things. You're going to look back. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, the reason why I say this, uh, 2013, my 